Hello, welcome to week seven of LHS 610. Today we're going to talk about interactive data analysis. We'll start off with some announcements. Then we'll cover an R tip of the day, talking about this new parse expression function. Um, and it looks like it's a little bit magical when you start to use it, but we'll, I'll talk about what is the motivation for using this function. And this will hopefully foreshadow how we intend to use this when we get into the uh, interactive uh, document portion of this lecture. Notice that the function itself starts off with two exclamation points followed by the parse underscore expr. Technically the two exclamation points and the text that comes after that are two separate functions, but anytime I refer to both of these functions kind of next to each other, I'm just going to call it the parse expression function, and I mean both of these combined. This function comes from the rlang package. The rlang package should automatically be installed when you install the tidyverse package, but you will need to library it in in order to access the parse expression function. So make sure to add library rlang to your code uh, when it comes time to use the parse expression function. So far in this class, we've worked with R notebooks. Um, another output format uh, that you can work with is an R markdown document. So we'll talk a little bit about what the differences are between R notebooks and R markdown documents. And we'll talk about how to convert an R notebook into an R markdown document. Once we have an R markdown document, we'll talk about some of the nice ways in which we can customize its appearance. And finally, uh, we'll talk about how to take those documents and make them interactive. Um, when I mean when I say we want to customize the appearance, I mean that if you want to share an analysis with someone who doesn't know how to code in R, you may not necessarily want to include your code in your output. So one of the ways we'll talk about customizing the appearance is, for example, making it so that all of your code is hidden and only the output of your code shows up. And then when we talk about making those interactive, we'll talk about how to add inputs that an end user can interact with. Sharing an interactive document with others isn't as straightforward as sharing an R notebook or an R markdown document. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is. And also I'll give you some options on how you can share interactive documents with others uh, in order to be able to let others interact with the interactive documents that you create. Optionally, if you want to learn more about these topics that we'll be covering today, uh, they, there are two different cheat sheets available on the RStudio website. One is the R Markdown cheat sheet. Another one is the Shiny cheat sheet. Those cheat sheets have a number of other functions that we won't be covering in class, so I've chosen not to distribute those to the class, uh, but they are there for your reading in case you'd like to look for uh, other things to, that you can do once you've understood or learned these frameworks. Also, there's, there is a great chapter on interactive documents uh, that's written by the creator of the R Markdown and Shiny packages. Um, and so I've included uh, a website link here that you can browse to in order to learn more. 